What do you get when you take a gay hairdresser, an Arab taxi cab driver, and a Jewish American? Can't teach an old dog new tricks. Great, want to be helpful? Make some calls. What are you, a bunch of wild Indians? You got a problem with women, Murphy? Give it up, man. You know how it's gonna be. We'll end up doing all our work. Nobody really enjoys conflict. Everybody wants to be happy at work. We all want to do our jobs well. But sometimes that's hard when we're asked to use skills we don't have. And one skill we don't have is the ability to work well with people who are different from ourselves. I've thought a lot about why people sometimes don't work together effectively. That is blacks, whites, females, males. And basically I think one of the reasons is an appreciation uh, for what is the overall mission? You know, what, what is the goal? And the common goal is to work together as a team to make product or provide a service. Our primary focus is to be successful. That's what we all are here for. Whether you work in business, education, or government, the reality is that today's workplace requires more cooperation, more information sharing, and more teamwork. And the teams are more diverse. More women, blacks, Asians, Hispanics, and other cultures. People with disabilities, younger and older people, gays and lesbians, all kinds of differences Diversity brings richness and challenges to work. This film will help prepare you for the demands of the new workplace. Because you make the difference. In many cases you hear things about, oh, this person was hired because they were black, or this person was hired because they're a female. You don't hear. This person was hired because they were the best person for the job. They're bringing the skills to this that's going to enhance the team. They weren't hired to fill a quota. I find sometimes that the new person doesn't stand much of a chance because they're coming in with the deck already stacked. Uh, announcing the appointment of Linda LeBeau, blah, 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 blah. Since joining the company five years ago, Ms. LeBeau has won three Team Achievement Citations and has also received the Golden Star Award for Leadership and Innovation. La-dee-da. I heard she's okay. Look, I've been here 25 years. I've paid my dues. What do they want from me? Teamwork, Sam. That's what they want. Well, just see who they call when they've got a problem. I won a few awards. I went to night school. I finished all their courses. And where'd it get me? Problem is, Ed, you're the wrong sex. Ten years have been the wrong color. Now I'm the wrong sex? So do you know her? Not really. I hear she's nice, but... So how come you didn't get it? You know that job as well as anyone. Oh, she counts double. You know she's black. First of all, you have to recognize that any promotion is controversial. There are always going to be people that don't agree with the decision and there are always those that are um, likewise very pleased with the decision. And when it's a promotion involving a, a member of a minority group, uh, it, it could be more controversial because uh, then the statements could include that the only reason the promotion came about was because of the fact that the person was minority. And on top of that, I had higher test scores than she did. This is reverse discrimination. Think about it. What are five points in a test score when it comes to this kind of job? And it was a score from an interview for crying out loud. But a woman has never had this job. It's always the first time. Pretty soon, it'll seem normal. Valuing diversity means that no one group is found themselves at an advantage or at a disadvantage. This group would include sex, creed, color, race, physical characteristics, Hi, everybody. I'm Linda LeBeau. And I'm very happy to be on your team. Hi, I'm Shelley Donovan. It's nice to meet you. We can't think in terms of minority, non-minority issues. We have to think in terms of the value that people have to offer, no matter what color you are, no matter where you come from. 
if you can't work with people that are different, then that's incompetence and that's not doing your job. It's a teamwork. And if you're not part of the team, then you're not doing your job. Another way every employee makes a difference is in the atmosphere we create at work. Hey, Charlie, how'd you do Friday night? We Friday make night the workplace what it is. We can make it a great place to work or one where people feel unwanted and unable to be productive. Excuse me. Hey, guys, meet Miss October. <laughs> hey, what a babe. Hey, speaking of babes, what's the new hire coming on? If a woman saw that in the locker room and they were offended, I would say, well, they, they had every right to be offended. They're not going to feel comfortable if that's an indication that that's the way that that male views women in, in such a stereotypical way. If you have um, an attitude that's negative, um, if you hold prejudices, biases against the people you're going to be working with, it's going to come through in a negative way and show. You do have to enjoy yourself in the workplace but there are some things that are just not acceptable and you should not accept them. We wind up with people feeling very uncomfortable or self-conscious, maybe hostile towards uh, another person or group of people and they s tend to spend a lot more time thinking about that situation rather than what their work assignment may be or how to better do the job. So where's she supposed to shower anyway? With you, Murphy? Hey, I don't mind. You got a problem with women, Murphy? Give it up, man. You know how it's gonna be. We'll end up doing all her work. You know, she'll probably break a nail or something. Oh, could you boys help me lift this, please? Yeah, nobody ever helped you lift nothing, huh, Murphy? <laughs> Baby, we'll break her in, huh? <laughs> hey, what if she was your wife or your sister? Who wouldn't let my wife work here? Not with these bozos. <laughs> well, I heard she's something to see, but uh, we don't know if she can run a machine or not. That's so a fine new piece of equipment we got uh, here. Yeah, yeah. Hey, how'd you know? Uh, have you have checked her out yet, though? I was talking about this new babe over. coming to work. Yeah. 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 yeah, I heard about your tattoo. That's just like you, Murphy. No cool. Now, with me, I just push the right buttons and everything is fine. Hey, why don't you guys go play in your playground? What's your problem, Grabowski? What's yours, Luther? This crew ain't hit production in 18 months, and we haven't got time for this. We don't produce, we're history. Hey, Stanley, we're just goofing around. We don't mean nothing by it. Hey, Reardon just closed two plants, and Unitech laid off 200 people. That could be us if we don't pull together, including her. No way. Hey, you read too much. Hey, you want to know what Blue Star said when they opened a the plant down the road? They said that in five years, there's only going to be one manufacturer in this town, and it ain't going to be us. And whether it's on the athletic field, or in the workplace, the same rules apply. The teams that win are teams that play together, the teams that complement one another. And whenever you find a situation where people who are of a different sex or a different color can't play together on a team, that team doesn't win. Listen, guys, I'm not interested in breaking up the fraternity, OK? I mean, I'm just here to work. Now, if I can't cut it, I'm sure you guys will let me know, right? By the way, my name's Susan. Stanley Grabowski, pleased to meet you. Nice to meet you. Hey, Ben Murphy. When a woman comes into a group, the woman cannot expect those people to just all of a sudden change to what she thinks they should be. But I also think the men cannot expect the women to change. I think they need to have a real mutual respect for each other. That's the key thing, is if you have respect for people, it shouldn't make any difference what they are. If you're sensitive towards their feelings and, and how they see things. Because I know I can do the job and get the job done, and when they cut you out, it makes you feel like you don't belong. Another way to hurt productivity is to uh, stand back and allow someone to make a mistake and, and not uh, try to guide them in the right way to go. Sometimes it happens that individuals are set up to fail. A co-worker can suppress information or they can make your job a lot more difficult than it needs to be. For generations, men have been in certain jobs and certain lines of jobs and that's the way things are. Men do this job, a woman can't do it. And a lot of people don't deal with change very well. Age difference can compound the problem. And it can be even harder if the young woman is a minority. Are you Joel? I'm from Mainness. What's the problem? I asked for a mechanic. 
Where's Archie? He's busy. What's the problem? I never seen you before. What's it doing? Search me. Well, sometimes the chain jams on the lower steel bar. You're the mechanic. Well, let me take a look. This kind of sabotage costs a lot of time and money. Who really looks foolish here? Hey, sweetheart, it's been 20 minutes. How about it? It's not the chain. When was this unit service? I don't know. Look it up. Hey, Archie, where you been? Hey, Joe, what's going on? You okay? What's it look like? How you doing down there? It's not the chain or the lower seal bar. Check the switch. Could be the switch. Well, we've had trouble with these things with the temperature control. I mean, I was watching it earlier, and the film didn't seem to be fusing. We've had trouble with the heat sensors in these things. Archie, he didn't tell me that. It's not been... down there. It's up here. Yeah. You're right. It's a thermostat. He didn't say anything to me about the heat sensors. Hey, why are you here, Archie? You mind? No problem. I'll put it together. Archie. It's all right, Maria. Look. Go back to the shop, I'll bring your tools to you later. But I can do it's it. It's all right, Maria. You want to be helpful? Make some coffee. They just can't hack it, you know? What are you going to do? What Joe failed to do was to give her the information that she needed to make, you know, to troubleshoot this problem. You have occasions or instances where people can point to and say yes we had one female one black and they didn't succeed you know they came in and they were a flop you know we had no choice and look what happened well the way i look at it is what did you do to help that person succeed in essence he never gave her a chance to uh, show what she could do i have had to work three times as hard as a, a white male would have to in order to prove that I am just as good. In many cases I've seen where a male will, rather than letting the female get in there and do the work that has to be done, they will get in there and say, well, I'll take that. Let me handle this part here. Where if it was another male, they would not have uh, jumped in there and taken the work uh, away. Every individual performs differently, even men. We put the cable in the trench, it's usually a joint effort. This is a fairly large cable, it's not one of the bigger ones that we put in. Just because I'm a woman doesn't mean I can't do the work. I may just have to approach it in a different way than they normally are used to. We don't all act and think alike. And in getting to know each other in the workplace, we have to realize that there are differences um, there are different expectations, there are different assumptions that we all have to work through. Two black men were arrested today for the alleged murder of Mary We can't help having stereotypes of people. Lady, get rid of that ugly fat. Tired of eating supper alone? Every day, we're blasted with messages. Invariably, you set yourself up to put your foot in your mouth at the least or to uh, really damage what could be a good work relationship, it can really be a problem. Hey, my man, how about that game last night? Hey, my man, I went to the symphony last night. Oh. Hi, Rose. So, what do you think's the best uh, Chinese restaurant in town? I don't know. I like the Mexican place on the corner. Oh, you must be Harry. I heard you were coming. That's great. I'm blind, but I can hear. You don't have to shout.
Hey, Roscoe. <laughs> I got a good one. What do you get when you take a gay hairdresser, an Arab taxi cab driver, and a Jewish American princess? Mike, I don't want to hear no, it. No, no, it is a good one. And at the no, end... really, Mike, I don't want to hear it. Hmm. Why is everyone so touchy today? I guess old Mike didn't want to be in the football pool. Hey, this might not be funny. Ann, I just saw Wayne, Billy, and Raphael up in the men's room. I think they're dealing drugs or something. I think awareness is the key not to fall into the trap of believing that every person that comes by fits into a particular mold or pigeonhole. Total strangers have come up to me in observing me and have made a remark about how Americanized I am. Well, you know, I, I'm a third generation American. Tell me the name of your honey butt. And, and here's somebody that's coming up to me saying, gee, you speak English so well. And I have to laugh at that because, well, of course I speak English. It happens to be the only language that I know. When you're we're brought up, you're always told not to stare at someone different. And, you know, don't look at that person over there with, with the white cane. You're not supposed to stare, and that's prejudiced to the extent that you don't know somebody. You're, you have fear of the unknown. You know, people passing me in the halls that will look at me real fast and, and turn away, you know, real fast. And the eye contact is really important, you know, it, it really is. Um, also, if I'm, stand, or if I'm with a group of people, I tend to have... Um, People come and stand in front of me, and all of a sudden I'm sort of shoved out of the circle. People make an assumption that because you're white, that therefore you agree with a certain set of values. I can remember in 68, in the aftermath of the riots in Washington, D.C., having to deal with a white taxi cab driver who was so offensive about blacks, and assuming that because I was a white male that I would agree with him, that I finally had asked him to stop the cab, and I got out of the cab and, and, and left. Somebody walk up to me, hey, give me five, you know. Uh, I don't teach my kids that. I feel like that's a very negative ethnic action. That's the way I, I, I feel about it. And I, I feel like and so it's for someone to approach me in that manner, it would be very offensive to me. When you're in a meeting and you, uh, you know, you're the only female in a meeting, you automatically assume to be the one that makes sure that the coffee is there. I don't think I realized that I had that idea of the, of the weaker sex sort of thing, sort of thing, until I found myself being surprised <laughs> that they weren't the weaker sex. Another very serious issue is age differences. Older employees have a problem with the younger employees coming in when the younger employees think they know all the answers and yet the younger employees don't turn around to the more seasoned employees and say, would you help me? Can I learn from you? We have a lot to learn from those who have come before us. How did you get that? Pull it up. Well, anyone that says that they're not prejudiced, they're basically lying to themselves because everyone has some type of prejudice type attitude. We have to realize that while there are certain statements that are very broad and general about any kind of a minority group, we have to recognize within those minority groups the individual differences. Wherever diverse people come to work together, real differences in styles and values can make it difficult to communicate. These differences may be cultural, but also result from differences in sex, age, religion, marital status, or lifestyles. If you're not sensitive to these differences, you can offend people and interfere with the process of working effectively together. I say this should we have at the Blue Lagoon. And they get a great show there. George, come on. Well, come on, it's just a show. It's funny. It's not a striptease. <laughs> Hey, is this for families too, or what? Okay, okay, what about the uh, Summit Hill Club? George, they don't allow... 
Listen, this is supposed to be a reward. I'd can the party on the plaques and just take a day off. Yeah. Yeah. Excuse me, but we've always had a party. And you have to have awards at an award ceremony. Maybe it's time for a change. Oh, come on. This is sacred, like religion, like Christmas. Or Hanukkah. Listening is very key in the workplace. You can't do anything unless you understand the issues. And if you don't listen well, then you'll never understand the issues. I got a lot of questions, like when, what... Okay, I, I, I get the whole thing solved. We'll have it right here. Uh, who the speaker is going to be, formal or casual, bruised or dry. It's no longer enough to just be able to do your own job well. Employees need to work God, with people so that they may even feel uncomfortable being around. They may have to work with people who have a very different style of communicating, of um, dealing with decision making. Okay, so we're all agreed. Everybody knows what to do. Okay, meeting adjourned. When you have a culturally diverse group, you have some people that take a more prominent role than others. And that person taking that role may leave out other members of the group of what their desires are. Hey, you guys, what are you, a bunch of wild Indians? Come back here and clean up. We have to share. We have to be open. We have to talk about our differences. Uh, we can't sit back and say that it's the other person or the other party's responsibility to learn about me. We have to say, I need to share who I am and what I am so that we can work together. You know, I didn't say this at the meeting, but I really got offended by what you said, you know, about wild Indians. Oh, I'm really sorry. I never thought about that. And I know you didn't mean anything by it. But if we're going to work together, I'd like you to know how I feel. I really agree. I'm glad you told me. Is there anything else? I'll let you know. Jeez, I hate these things. We were all agreed. We do it their way, they don't even show up. It drives me nuts. They just sit around and smile, then they go off and do something else. Maybe if everyone took the attitude that they're in some way a facilitator when they're not speaking, that they more or less you know, listen and, and weigh things and let someone maybe make a mistake or sound a little silly. That's sometimes where the best ideas come from. I don't think there's any quick fix or one easy way to learn how to communicate with diverse groups of people or individuals. And I think one of the problems is that we have a tendency to think that we can buy a how-to manual or go to a, a quick workshop on multicultural sensitivity and then come away after a few days, you know, being experts. And I think that's perpetuating another set of uh, stereotypes that we can do without. It may seem easier to be with people most like ourselves. But the employee who is able to work well with people who are different is the employee who will be the most successful now and in the future. We are all responsible for valuing diversity by accepting people who are different, creating a climate that welcomes everyone, by helping other members of the team succeed, by avoiding stereotypes and getting to know people as individuals, and by listening and valuing the contribution of everyone. You make the difference.